The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Not bad for a first extermination. You stood atop a pile of knocked out angels, their bodies unable to move, thanks to you. Your tail dripped with yellow angel blood. For being specifically created by heaven torn demons, they were quite terrible fighters. Well, you took a few steps forward, staring down the roof you were standing on. Perhaps the angels were blinded by their pride. After all, the non-heavenborn exterminators, the so-called paladins, were cleaning house in the streets right now. Kinda funny. The paladin core was completely ignored by the angels, even sneered at when stealing a kill. You raised your head. You felt the presence of something behind you. Your tail twitched as you turned to face the new threat. An angel, spear raised, ready to be thrown. Her left arm was stretched out for aim. Eyes narrowed. She was getting ready. Mockingly, you spread your arms, offering yourself to her. Unafraid, you stared her down. You neared sharply, taking in the smell of blood, sulfur and death around you. And yet your heartbeat was calm. In life you weren't a killer. But the moment you learned about the yearly invasion of heaven, it was like a switch in your brain was flipped. You always say to Nepo babies. There was no feeling greater to you than seeing a rich kid on social media destroy their lives during a stunt. And the thought of someone born with a golden spoon in your mouth becoming homeless made you incredibly horny. And who had experienced more nepotism than a heaven-born angel? Living up there in heaven, their entire lives, their entire existence. And they come down here killing you and other demons. <laughs> but you, you were lucky. You were born as a manticore demon down here. You were reborn as a manticore demon down here. Usually they were put in the wrath layer, but... Your existence up here was proof enough that they could appear in any layer, really. As a manticore, your spine was elongated into a thick, black, chitin-covered scorpion tail. Your hair, a luscious brown mane, and you had razor-sharp teeth. Since becoming a demon, you had bitten your tongue off multiple times, and the poison in your tail was potent enough that you could probably kill a mortal in minutes, but angels and demons, well, might as well just be a sleep drug. A bit of sweat ran down the angel's mask. You grinned widely. You encountered throws before tonight. You actually liked them. They were foolish enough to throw away their weapons in the hopes of... What? An easy kill on range? God. You're such a coward. You'd destroy her. And so the spear was thrown a split second later. It came in fast, but you were faster. You lunged forward, dodging the spear as it grazed the back of your shirt, your arms wrapping around the angel's hip. She screamed as you threw her entire weight on her. You raised your upper half, opening up her chest to the stinger of your tail. But something was off. Her eyes weren't focused on you, instead. They were focused on something behind you. There was a 50-50 chance this was a trick. And so you made the split-second decision to turn your head, following her gaze. At the edge of the rooftop, flying above the street, you saw him. A man. Horned exterminator mask, but there was no male exterminators. And he definitely wasn't a paladin. They didn't wear masks, but helmets and armor so heavy, even if they had wings, they were incapable of flight. 
near his left hand raised, one finger outstretched. The angel's spear flying a mere inch before his face. Omar floated. He stared past it with an almost disinterested expression. His brow raised. Uh, Adam, I... Adam? He thought. The angel below you was panicking. Wait, like the Bible, Adam? The spear spun around in midair and without a word flew forward. Faster than any spear you had seen before being thrown. And you just barely managed to jump off the angel, who was immediately impaled by her own weapon. She screamed, and Adam sighed. Now nah, walk it off, clarinet. Y yes, boss. Adam crossed his arms, while the angel pulled out the spear from her navel. It just barely missed her important internals. She almost died just now. While Adam safely landed on the rooftop. <laughs> what a beautiful display of violence. I'm almost sure I'm going to kill you now. He made a finger gun. Bang. You didn't know what happened next. You felt pain, that one was sure, but you weren't gone. Not dead. Alive. You breathed heavily, unable to concentrate on the things happening around you. Staring up, you saw the red sky of hell and the smoke of the combat around you. Your head rolled to the side. There was a hole in the building where you had stood just a moment ago. It went down to the street, leaving a crater in the road before fizzling out into a round dent. You... you had dodged him. You raised your head. Adam stood there. He walked towards you, slowly and smiling. Well, 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 nice show of survival instincts. He clapped his hands mockingly. Why wasn't he just finishing you off? Just a single millisecond of hesitation and I would have taken more than your tail. T tail You set up, the vertigo making a burp. You reached down to your hip and back, where it hurt the most. You felt your bud. It was as if it was on fire. But no tail. Let me guess... That was your only weapon? He leaned down to you with a smug grin. <laughs> God, this must suck for you, huh? He burst out into violent laughter. Your heart beat faster. That... That was fear. You were fearing for your life. Adam made a finger gun again, pointing it at you. Silence. He was enjoying this moment. But then... I admit... I respect that you aren't begging to suck my cock to let you live. You narrowed your eyes. His thumb motioned as if it was pulling back the hammer of a revolver. <laughs> as if you would spare my life. You mumbled loud enough for him to hear. Adam tilted his head curiously. I mean, even if I did, you would pull the trigger regardless. You're enjoying this too much. You exhaled sharply and quickly. A guy like you would never let a demon anywhere near your dick. His mouth twitched into a smile. His dick just so happened to be his favorite topic. Obviously he was getting distracted now. You noticed, and well, perhaps he'd allow it. Try it, maybe if I let you.
right. Maybe I let you. He mused. His finger was now a mere inch from your mouth. Your right eye twitched slightly due to the overwhelming amount of stress you were feeling right now. I suppose I'd be confused. Would someone of your stature even get hard at a pitiful, worthless creature like me? Bile was crawling up your throat as you spoke. Are you saying I wouldn't? Your eyes flashed. And it was in this moment that you stood up. Where was this sudden burst of energy coming from? You didn't even feel the pain from your singed off tail anymore, or the thousands of cuts that covered your body, as you stared into Adam's eyes. Yeah. I'm saying you would be limp dicked. In this moment, a loud, all-consuming gong echoed over the circle. Ah, shucks, he said, lowering his arm. Looks like the extermination on the pride layer is over. A large portal opened up around the center of the city, leading to Hell's second layer to continue the eradication to the lower levels. The angels took flight, carrying paladins with them as they entered it. Adam looked at it for a moment from afar, and then returned his attention to you. Tell you what, I accept your challenge, demon. He spit on the ground next to you, and your eyes went horrified. With a flick, he threw a golden card at you. Show this at the embassy information booth. I'll be there, after we're done killing. With a shaking hand, you took the card. What were you considering his offer? <sighs> the act of picking this card up, it was the most humiliating feeling you ever experienced. And by the time you stood up again, it was gone. You deadpanned as you read it. Free fuck with Adam. Great. You mumbled as you read the bold letters. Only given to hellishly hot babes. I'm about to kill this guy. For that pun alone, he deserved death. Hm. Though, hellishly hot. That certainly was a nice compliment. As shallow as it was. Hm. Fine. You accept this offer. It was something to brag about, after all. I had sex with the first man to walk the earth. After all, in hell, it didn't matter the amount of partners one had, but uh, who you did it with. And it certainly would be an interesting story to tell. You wanted this for the bragging rights. Not only did you incapacitate a bunch of angels, who were still powdering the rooftop. You also impressed the first man to walk the earth enough with your prowess to do it with you. Though considering he had pre-made coupon cards for free get-togethers, this probably was more common than you at first thought. While going the path of a man or after being treated on twice with two different ladies by the same guy, Probably did that to a man. But as you come down, the pain in your body returned. You didn't survive the entire skirmish while wounds. They were all too shallow to kill, but they were still cuts covering your entire body. Some still bleeding, and probably would for a while. Not to mention your poor, poor tail. You shoved your body downstairs. According to the advice you had gotten from a master, it took about 15 minutes for the looting to start after an extermination. You had seven minutes to get your ass back home. Having followed the advice of an angel hunter, 
He had told you the knowledge of the angel's overly aggressive and overly confident fighting style. That their weapons were only deadly when internals were damaged. And why the bleeding cuts covering her body weren't so bad. It was also him who suggested to settle in a house without a roof access. As on Rufus' access, hunters waited to challenge the horde. Dripping with your red liquids, you managed to enter your apartment building after a while, making your way to the fourth floor, entering the seedy little place you called home. Vaguely, mentally, aware, you turned on your TV, threw the rags off your back, and entered your bathroom. Hospitals weren't really a thing in hell, as they were mostly used for plastic surgery. It wasn't really a point, due to the modern regeneration. Taking a glass you filled it with water, downing a handful of painkillers. You then filled your tub with water and skin-sensitive soap, stopping the torrent when you felt like it was filled enough. Getting inside, you brace yourself, dunking your entire body beneath the water. You screamed. The warm liquid made you become painfully aware of every little wound covering your body as all of them simultaneously fired pain. As all of your nerves were simultaneously firing, but you were not going to bandage up all dirty and sweaty. You remained in the tub for an hour, twitching, close to passing out. Vaguely aware of the outside, where you could hear the looting begin. Screams and shouts of fights. <sighs> you sighed as you got used to the pain. And the painkillers helped a lot too. By the time you left the bath, the water had become a deep crimson. Drying yourself off, you began disinfecting and bandaging up. It was weird, really. You should have died, if you were mortal. From bad loss alone. After all, this still had been your first year in hell. Not as bad as you expected, really. During your first week in hell, you had come in contact with an angel hunter who taught you. The guy had been down here for 20 years so he knew what he was talking about and all he wanted for you to crash at his place was what he described as your barely legal butt cheeks well dying in 19 had its perks down here bandaging up you left the bathroom noticing that the hunter still wasn't back yet to this day he had refused to tell you his name Explaining that names had power, so you just called him the old back. Which he found funny. In your bedroom mirror, you checked your rear. Where your tail had been. Was now a heavily scarred patch of skin. Carefully you touched it. It was tender and a little unsightly. Seems as if this wouldn't regrow anytime soon. The finger gun move really was a killer attack, huh? would have vaporized you immediately. You got dressed in all black, sweater and pants. It was better to wear dark clothes during looting, especially someone as well endowed as you. Modesty and low attention growing clothes did the trick down here. Aggressively you comb through your hair to get it into the right shape to put it into a ponytail. You entered the embassy many hours later. Public transport was not functioning, for at least a week after this. Not like it functioned normally anyways. Driving a vehicle was impossible in the chaos. 
too many roadblocks and bodies lining the road. Not to mention having a coward side post-extermination often led to a result of Hey, yes, hey, I'm breaking into your car! So walking was safe-ish. Especially around the embassy itself. It was like a ghost town. You entered the giant building, your gaze going left to right. It was filled with exterminators who had been left behind, hurt ones, who couldn't continue the fight on the lower layers. Most definitely they were the ones you defeated among them. One of them stood before the secretary counter. She was furious. She was shouting about how she could still fight, that the poison in her is flushed out. But the very bored woman behind the desk just deadpanned and said, Our forces are in layer 6 as of right now. Reinforcements are no longer sent. Maybe you should have been more careful around poison spewing demons, flute. The exterminator bubbled with hatred, and she stared at you with disgust as you approached. The fuck does this thing want here? She barked. With a smirk, you pulled out your card, flicking it at the secretary. She adjusted her glasses and read it. Ugh, she went, turning it to show the angel. I've been trying to get one of these for ten years, shouted Flute, the exterminator. What the fuck did you do, demon, to deserve this? The angel spit on the floor right in front of your feet. Sir Adam hands this out to demons, who he didn't manage to kill and thinks are hot enough for a quick lay, muttered the secretary towards the angel. She slid the card through a reader. And it is real, not a fake, she said. She returned the card to you, before looking at Flute, saying, there are some angels who fake these cards. You suppressed a chuckle. But then the woman got serious. Just don't put too much pride into this, demon. This is not an achievement. At least one demon in hell each year gets one of these. Usually someone in the last layer. <laughs> well, this isn't the last layer. Maybe I can be a little proud of it. After all, I didn't have to try for ten years. Flute looked like she was about to kill you. Well, perhaps you are a... Uh, well, perhaps you are a special case. She then handed you a paper with a number on it. Room 644. It's on floor 12. Any damages you create before and after your cow... Room 644 and floor 12. Any damages you create before and after your coitus with Adam will be fine. And you don't want that. Jeez. That was so bureaucratic. It put hell's porn in the street to shame. But as you turn to walk, you quickly said out loud, By the way, Flute, next time learn how to dodge a tail, huh? It took the exterminator just enough time to realize what you meant for you to reach the elevator. You could hear infuriated screams the moment the metal door closed. You gulped. If you're still at your tail, you wouldn't have darted for the elevator. You would have just accepted her screams, but now, now you are neutered. Seemingly forever, so it was a different beast. On the 12th floor, you found yourself in a long, wide hallway with a royal purple carpet. The designated room was at the furthest end on the left. You could just enter it. It wasn't locked. Huh. It looked like a regular hotel room. Not a seedy one either. You'd call it three stars. If you were generous, maybe four. The floor was carpeted, a clean beige. Walls were colored white. A window showed the devastation outside, though from up here it almost looked like a painting. 
curious. You never seen hell from this high up. There were about three buildings, maybe, that were of equal height to the embassy building. Oh, thank God you aren't naked yet. You jumped with fright, turning to see Adam, who had just entered. Though he no longer looked like he did before. His robes were red, dripping with blood, and one of his horns was broken off. Oh boy, this, this, this was a good extermination. He exhaled, exhausted, and smiled. While well, you're deadpan. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I, I, I killed... He mockingly made quotation marks with his fingers. Your people. Then again, they were on lower floors anyway, so not like you even interacted with them. He had a point. You didn't care. Anyways, just let me freshen up, babe. Uh, okay. You raised a hand. I react allergic to the surname, babe. He looked at you. Got it, slut. You looked him up and down and then said yourself, Well, then clean yourself up, you tampon. His eyes widened in surprise. He then pointed a finger at you. You just barely managed to not flinch. I like you. He said as a follow-up. Tell you what. He summoned another cart, flicking it to you. If you survive the next extermination, you can catch this one too. I wouldn't even mind if you end up being a dead fish in bed. I like your humor. We have to talk more. He then quickly slid through the door. That led to the bathroom. He then heard him shower. And threw herself on the bed. Sinking about an inch into it. Dang, this thing was soft. Like a cloud. You threw yourself up. He almost fell asleep. This was a little too comfy. It was then that the door to the bathroom opened. Ah, maybe you did fall asleep for a moment. With a pleased sigh, Adam left. He wasn't wearing his mask anymore, revealing that he was actually quite handsome, even if he had a bit of a douchebag haircut. Slightly surprised, you to your head. Huh. What? Don't like what you see? He kept closer, confidently smirking. But gently you place your hand on his cheek. Actually, no. <laughs> it's just, you look like a guy who would totally drive a sand buggy. You purred. Which is, so my type. He blinked in surprise. Wait, how do you know I drive a sand buggy? Torque. Was all you said before leaning forward, kissing him. Well, Adam was upset you called him a dork, but he stopped being upset when you shoved your tongue into his mouth. Yours was thick and deliciously sweet. You liked that. At the same time, however, your hairs vibrated with electricity. You could feel something. It was like licking a battery, except it was um, bracing your entire body, like an electric blanket. You weren't entirely sure if you liked it. At least not until his own tongue, long and slender, pushed past yours. It was in fact so long it was at the precipice of your throat. And the shock it brought with it was enough to make you whimper in delight. You you almost just came from that. Without hesitation you reached for the belt of his bathrobe. Now there was fire under your ass. In a more nice way. Pulling open the little knot. He then pulled back a little. To stick with the flow, you started gently kissing his neck and shoulder. At amused. Mm -hmm. Someone's eager. I like that. So, how about we get you out of those clothes, huh? 
Yes, please. You hummed. Adam raised your arms, pulling off your shirt in a quick motion. Oh, no underwear! Naughty, naughty. You exhaled, excited. Your legs shaking, quivering. I mean, I was expecting this. Why would I make it more difficult for you? He then cupped your chin, as he grinned. I guess to make it harder. Smirking at his pun, you reached for his groin, and he shuddered as you gripped him tightly. Oh yeah, right. As if that can get any more harder than this. And stop. Adam paused the video, turning around, slapping his ruler in his other hand. Did you really have to pause at a close-up of your butt? Complained Saint Peter. I do, otherwise you don't learn, bro. For a while now, Saint Peter had been under Adam's metaphorical wing. The gatekeeper of heaven had fallen in love with a mortal soul. And since she was much younger than him, her divine powers were much weaker than his. So Adam put it upon himself to teach this shy little body of his how to handle a mortal soul without turning them into a fried chicken. Using a demon, in this case you, the manticore going by the name of Beyond, as an example. Adam had secretly recorded your little get-together, specifically for teaching purposes. And honestly, this was the reason he had been so gentle with you while having his way with you. Normally, he was much more rough, because he knew exactly how to deal with his own divinity. But he needed to be a little more plump now, a little more gentle, a little more soft, so it was easier to explain. So, Adam pressed rewind back to when you were making out. You never got further than this, right, bro? Saint Peter deadpan. Are you just rubbing it in my face, or are you getting to a point? Adam raised his right hand. I'm speaking. He pressed play again. Now look at this. Imagine your body like a big ass Tesla coil attached to a car battery. And the girl you're trying to bang is a wet, naked person trying to touch it. You need to manage to feed your Tesla coil just as little enough power as possible, or else you end up with fried lawn pig for dinner. I'm not a cannibal. Well, neither am I. Just a metaphor. Right, right. Sorry, Adam. So let's continue. Right here. God, her moans were so freaking hot. Saint Peter flinched. Yo, I can see her. Yeah. Yeah, just wait a moment. In a second, I throw her around. Don't worry about it. Then you'll see her face. God, she's so freaking hot. Hey, thank you for watching the video until the very end. I greatly appreciate that. That helps me with the algorithm. But before we say goodbye, I would really like to shout out all of my lovely darling stewards for supporting my 4.99 membership tier. Maxicat, Alison Watkins, Husky HD 17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanna Morietti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Your support is greatly appreciated, as well as the support of my other channel members. I couldn't do this without you. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe if you're new here. And see you soon.